So I completed the CE Shops real estate licensing training about four weeks ago, but I've yet to take the test and I'll tell you why in a second. But in this video, we'll cover like the cost of the CE Shop compared to other programs, the quality of the work, the timeline, like how long does it take to actually go through it, customer service, and also beware there's an additional module that adds to the end of the training you don't actually have to do to pass your state why training and move on to the next step. But I didn't know that, so I did it, and it took me an additional week. As a point of reference, I kind of plowed through the training. I did it in about seven to eight weeks, so adding the extra week was a lot because I was like moving through the course. So here's why I've not taken my exam yet. It's because I'm not ready to take the exam, which is one of the big things I wish the CE shop would explain. And maybe they did explain it, and I just didn't pay attention, but understanding that the educational training is just part of the work but what I didn't understand was the bigger picture. Like for instance, in Texas, you have to do a bunch of other things that you should be doing concurrently with the exam. Just for example, they could have linked me to the TREC website. I'm in Texas, Texas Real Estate Commission. It'll obviously be different based on your state, but they have the actual steps that you need to take in order to get your real estate license. So like here, step one is to file your application and get your fingerprints done, submit your qualifying education. So actually step three is what you do in the CE shop then take the exam, find a sponsor, et cetera. I'm going to tell you what they do in Texas, but they probably do something very similar in your state as well. So in Texas, there's 180 hours of training. They broke it into six 30-hour modules. However, there's actually a seventh module on the CE Workshop website. So you go through all six, then there's a seventh, which I assume you have to do because you had to do the first six to get all your certifications. The number seven one, you don't actually have to do. So I spent a whole entire another week plus going through this module seven of the exam that I didn't have to do. It was cool to do. Maybe I learned something, but I didn't have to do this module seven. And module seven, there were 15 tests and you had to do them three times, get like an 80% passing, I guess it's to help better prepare you for the test. But I just did basically another week and a half of coursework that I didn't need to do because I took notes all throughout the course. All right, let's talk about the cost of the course. To me, it was right in the sweet spot. So when I paid for the course, I did a standard course and it was $471. FYI, you've probably seen this. It seems like the course is always on some on sale in some shape or form. So I say, if you're buying the course at full price, you've messed up. There's always some sale for the CE Shops course, but they have like a standard version, a value version, and a premium version. Like I said, just get the standard. The standard was $471, value was $501, and the premium was $771. The only difference between the standard and the value was that there was some sort of business building course they added on. To me, it's like one, if you're with a broker, your broker should be giving you business training. You don't need to pay like the C shop to give you some generic business training, right? And then when it goes to like the premium training, there's like a 90 hour continuous education and then a five hour Texas. Um, once again, I'm in Texas, but a Texas real estate ebook. Once again, you can get that from your broker, right? And then also like to me, just get into the business, start selling houses. You need to do continuous education before you even move even one unit. So to me, that's just add-ons that you don't really need to do. But the price was good. It was right in the sweet spot because I saw a course that were like $200. And I'm like, eh, that's a little too cheap. And I saw a course that were like $1,000. And I'm like, why am I paying you like $1,000 to take an online course? It's online. It's not like I'm getting some, you know, special... Um, instructor that's going to be you know telling me this or that i'm going to get to work with my classmates and i'll get like the communal experience i'm just taking the thing online so i just got the one that was right in the sweet spot and so far it was uh, it's been pretty good next let's talk about the quality of the work as a point of reference i spent seven years in the mortgage industry between being a loan officer and an underwriting so some of the stuff may come a little bit easier to me than to you if you're brand new and have really no experience in the industry but the coursework was pretty good. I, I learned a lot of stuff. And like I said, it took me about eight weeks. My goal was just to plow through the training and knock out one module a week. How I did this was there were six modules. And I figured if I could do 10% a day, that would take me 60 days. So right, my goal every day was to do at least 10% of the coursework. Some days I did more, some days I did less, but I made sure I was always at that 10% threshold. Here's how the training works. So in Texas, there were six 30 hour modules. Let's look at the individual modules. So one module will take you 30 hours to complete. And amongst that module, there may be eight to 20, depending on what the topic was, different 
courses you take within that module. At the end of each course, you took like an exam and you needed to have, it was like a 10 question exam. And you need at least a 70 to pass. And at the end of each individual segment, you had to pass an exam. And so at the end of the 30 hours, you take a practice exam and there are about 100 questions and you need to get at least a 70 in order to pass those exams. So once you pass the practice exam, at that point, you can go and schedule a proctored exam to actually pass that course. So it's a proctored exam, which means somebody is like looking at your computer and they have access to your computer to make sure that basically you're not cheating and like looking up answers during the quiz. So one thing they're very particular about or one thing that'll help you save time is to follow the exact instructions they give you as far as making sure your workplace is sanitized. So they give you something like, hey, make sure your, your desk is clean. There's nothing on the walls. There's nothing as far as like educational material. There's nothing around there. And I'm just like, okay, um, I understand that, but I'm just going to kind of do my own thing. I'm not going to like wipe clean my whole table because I actually, I work from home and so I have like work stuff on my table. So when I went to take the proctored exam, they had to, I had to make sure all that stuff was gone. And here's the thing about the proctored exam. I assume the proctor has a lot of people they're looking at. So during like the first sweep, if you don't have everything good to go, you kind of go like to the, to the back of the line. So the first time I took the exam, it took me like 30 minutes to have my um, to meet all the checkpoints as far as every, everything good to go as far as what the proctor needed as far as like a clean exam, having like no, if you have a cup, it has to be like clear on the table, making sure there's nothing like on the wall. I had like a whiteboard that had to do with like my, my business in the background. I had to remove that. So make sure you follow the um, proctoring tips to a T just so you can save time. And so it may take you typically about five to 10 minutes for the proctor to make sure you're, you're good to go. But it took me like 30 time, 30 minutes the first time I went through the uh, the proctoring part. And also you shouldn't cheat, but if you're trying to cheat, they're on the lookout for everything. Like they have you take your camera and look like under the desk. They have you put the camera on all the walls and stuff, FYI. So you should be cheating anyways. It's not that hard, but uh, just kind of FYI. And here's the thing, like I took good notes as far as going through the course, but also at the end of each course, they have like a study guide or cheat sheet as well. So if for some reason you took no notes, you should take notes. They do have like a, and it's a pretty legit study guide for each course. It's like between uh, 15 to 20 pages going over the key points you should have taken uh, from th that course. And so the proctored exam is like 60 questions. And so I think those exams took me like maybe 20 to 30 minutes to complete. And here's how my practice exam compared to the actual proctored exam. So for segment one, practice 86, real life 82, then uh, two, 84, 85, three, 92, 93, four, 87, 92, and then five, 90, and 87 on the final exams. I forgot to write down my practice score for that. So meaning to say that what you get on the practice exam will be pretty much the same as you get on the proctored exam. And once I got through the courses, honestly, I didn't do a lot of studying either. Like I was just like, okay, I've gone through my notes. I kind of understand what's what, and I'm just going to kind of plow through the uh, the course. And that, that worked for me. It may not work for you. Maybe we'll do a little bit of studying before the practice exam um, comes. Oh, another thing is typically it's going to take you a week to schedule between finishing the exam and actual scheduling a proctored exam. So just kind of FYI, it's not like you can pass the practice exam on a Monday, then have a, another training set up for Tuesday. So typically what you're doing is you're finishing the training, then you're going to, the, you're scheduling the exam, then you're scheduling like the, you're going through the next module. So if you're doing it like me, you're going, you know, a course a week almost. Typically, you'll be taking exam number one while you're in the middle of module number two, which takes me to customer service because actually I didn't complete module number one until I actually was on, which takes me to customer service because I didn't actually complete practice, which takes me to customer service because I didn't actually complete exam number one, the proctor version until I was in the middle of course number three. Because So like, as I mentioned, they're proctored exams. I have like this, this old like Lenovo computer. And so, they do like a compatibility test to make sure that your computer is compatible with the software that the proctor needs to have on your computer in order to see your exam. So I passed the compatibility test the first time, but when I went to actually take the first exam, I just could like log in for whatever reason, like the, the exam wouldn't come up. And so I reached out to customer service. It was just, you know, somebody, you know, in India or Indiana, who knows where they were at. And so they were just like, oh, we'll file a ticket for you. And um, yeah, you, you, we'll just file a ticket for you basically. Here's the issue you could run into besides the inconvenience. In Texas, the proctored exams are free. In some states, they are not free. So I don't know what would happen in that situation if I wasn't able to access the test because technically I missed 
the exam, like what I had to pay, the proctoring fee all over again. Who knows? And I don't know, like I said, the real time customer service really couldn't do uh, anything for me as far as help. And I think they got back to me like maybe two or three days later. It was like, uh, they didn't really do anything for me. And so I ended up scheduling my exam number two or number one after exam number two. And I had, and it just, things worked fine exam number two. So I'm not sure what actually happened or why I couldn't log into the website. Technical issue number two was like during the Black Friday or Cyber Monday timeframe, like their website was just down. I guess they were totally unaware that folks would log in and try to get deals on like the Black Friday, Cyber Monday timeframe. It was just down completely. And so that was super inconvenient for me because I actually had my another exam, I think exam number four scheduled for Cyber Monday. So I didn't get to take my exam on Cyber Monday either because the website was down. And it also was inconvenient because I couldn't actually do any coursework either. So I just kind of lost three days due to the website being down. I will say this, I reached out to their Twitter account. I'm not sure why I thought to, thought of that, but the Twitter people responded right away just with the DM saying, hey, we're sorry for the inconvenience. And they would waive the fee for whatever the proctor exam was. But once again, I was in Texas, so it didn't matter. But just kind of FYI, if you run into any troubles, their Twitter account responds a lot quicker than their customer service. But they do have like the, the live chat people, but I don't know, they can't really do anything. I guess they don't have the authority to say that, hey, we're going to waive your fees for you. Like I said, I think the coursework is, is on point. Like I think it's prepared me well for the test. According to their website, 68% of people passed the exam. So I figure out hopefully in that 68%. And I guess they didn't say the first time, but I, I'm going to be a first time passer. But uh, check the description. I will let you know um, when I take the exam and what my score is and let you know how the coursework compared to real life exam. It may do a follow-up video or it may just be in the description, I guess, uh, TBD. But if you guys got any other questions, let me know. And uh, if you're a real estate agent, check out my channel. It probably is the best home buying information on the internet. Not probably, it is. All right.